It's Macy's Labor Day sale, so gear up as summer cools down with 30% off timeless looks from Levi's and specials like 30 to 50% off statement making shoes for her and 60% off luggage from Samsonite and more. Or use your coupon or Macy's card and get an extra 20% off more great deals. Plus, Star Rewards members can earn rewards even faster during Macy's Star Money bonus days going on now. Savings off regular sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. Hello, listeners. I'm your host, Amara, and this is Black Girl Gone, a true crime podcast. On this episode of Black Girl Gone, we tell the story of Karen Elaine Smith, who was 53 years old when she was murdered in San Bernardino, California, on April 10, 2017. Karen worked as a special education teacher in an elementary school. She had recently got married, but shortly after the wedding, her marriage collapsed. Karen decided to leave her husband. Her estranged husband, however, had a different plan for Karen. The day she was murdered, he walked into the school where she worked and shot her. He also shot and killed an eight-year-old boy before turning the gun on himself. The brutal murder of Karen stunned everyone who knew her, and no one could comprehend why her estranged husband would kill her while she was at school in front of her students. This is Karen's story. I can't tell this week's story without acknowledging what has been happening in this country over the last two weeks. Between the massacre in Buffalo of 10 Black people and the killing of 21 mainly Brown children and their teachers days before summer break in Texas, it's been a rough few weeks. Those of us who live in America have become accustomed to mass shootings and shootings at schools. They happen so frequently that most of us don't even know all of the shootings that have taken place. You can believe whatever you want about guns or the Second Amendment, but I think we can all agree that something needs to be done. What happened to Karen in April 2017 is one of the hundreds of school shootings that have taken place over the past several years. But unlike a lot of school shootings we are familiar with, this shooting was not carried out by a bullied student or someone with a political agenda. This was a domestic situation. However, two children were shot, and one was tragically killed. This terrifying incident left lasting impressions on many people, Not only for the families of the victims, but also for the children who saw their beloved teacher shot to death in front of them. Those who were impacted by what Karen's husband did that day will feel the ripple effects for years to come. The most bizarre part of the story is how quickly it escalated. Karen went from a happy newlywed to being murdered by her husband in less than four months. As a result of the sudden breakdown of their marriage, Many people who knew Karen were unaware of everything that happened in the last few months of her life. Karen was originally from Harbor City, California, where she spent the majority of her life. She was the mother of four children whom she raised with her first husband, Roderick. Karen was a devoted mother to her four children. Throughout her life, she was always passionate about teaching. And since her mother was a teacher, the passion for helping students grew in her from an early age. Karen decided that she would homeschool her four children. Now, if you have kids and have dealt with virtual learning during the pandemic, then you know that it takes a lot of patience to homeschool kids, especially four. Yet, it's a clear indication of the kind of person and mother that Karen was. In the early 2000s, Karen made the decision to go back to school so that she could become a teacher. Since her children were older, Karen decided that she wanted to continue doing what she loved by becoming a teacher. She made the choice to go into special education. According to Karen's family, she had always had a passion for children with autism and learning disabilities and wanted to be in a position to help them. She attended the California State University at San Bernardino, where she majored in liberal studies, and she completed her degree in 2005. After graduating, Karen began teaching after earning her teaching credentials, and she dedicated her life to helping students. 
Karen began working for the San Bernardino Unified School District, and in 2010, she began working at the Cajon High School in San Bernardino. According to those who knew Karen, she was devoted to her faith as a Christian and spent her Sundays going to church. Her mother told the LA Times that, quote, she was a Christian, she loved the Lord and served him. While we don't know much about Karen's first husband, the two were married for 21 years before they divorced in 2009. Karen had spent most of her teaching career teaching in high school students. Throughout her career, she continued to pour herself into teaching. Karen's children all graduated from college, partly thanks to her dedication to education. In 2013, Karen met Cedric Anderson, a pastor who was very active in the community in and around San Bernardino. Now, people who knew Cedric said that he appeared to be a really nice person who was also very much dedicated to his faith and his work as a pastor. Karen was a person who was very connected to her faith, so meeting Cedric seemed like the perfect fit. According to reports, Karen and Cedric developed a friendship that eventually became a romantic relationship. Although we do not know the details of their relationship over the years, those close to Karen felt that Karen and Cedric had a wonderful relationship. Cedric had been a pastor for 17 years and had lived in multiple cities, including Atlanta, Las Vegas, and cities in California. He had also been married previously and was a father himself. The people who knew Cedric didn't witness him as violent or abusive. However, people aren't always what they seem to be. In 2015, Karen stopped working at the high school and became a special education teacher at North Park Elementary in San Bernardino. And after four years of knowing each other, Karen and Cedric decided to get married. Karen was excited to get married again and believed that Cedric was a good man. The wedding took place on January 28, 2017. Karen wore a traditional white wedding dress, and pictures of the day show her surrounded by family and friends. The day appeared to be a happy occasion for Karen and Cedric. Following their wedding, the couple honeymooned in Sedona, Arizona. On Cedric's Facebook page, which is still up and open, he shared multiple pictures of their vacation. He also shared a video of him and Karen, which he describes how much fun they're having together. Before getting married, Karen and Cedric had lived separately, but after the wedding, Cedric moved into Karen's home in Riverside, California, where she had lived since the early 2000s. Now, she had lived there with her first husband before they divorced, and so it was the couple's first time living together. Now, Cedric was no exception to the rule that you don't really know a person until you live with them. Prior to January 2017, there didn't appear to be any posts on Cedric's Facebook page about Karen. However, after the wedding, Cedric seemed to post about Karen a lot. Now, it doesn't seem that abnormal from the outside looking in. They had just gotten married, and he may have just been really happy. However, in hindsight, it looked more like love bombing. Now, for those of you who don't know what love bombing is, it's when abusers bombard their partners with what looks like loving gestures. It might be gifts, it might be words, but psychologists believe this is a part of a pattern of abuse. I mean, who doesn't want their partner to love them and compliment them? However, there are times when domestic abusers will use love bombing to gain control, to manipulate their victims into thinking that they're safe and secure. Now, despite the fact that it's really about control, they make you believe it's about love. Social media allows people to present any image they want. However, you can't really hide from the people who actually know you. Karen soon discovered that Cedric was not who she thought he was. Not long after the wedding and moving into her home, Cedric's behavior changed. He stopped preaching a few years earlier because, according to Karen's mother, he had determined that he wouldn't be able to earn much money as a pastor. And so he started working construction and maintenance and wanted to start his own business. Now, it's unclear when exactly the couple's relationship unraveled. But by March 2017, Karen had noted that Cedric's behavior was strange. He began accusing his wife of cheating on him, which wasn't true. But Karen described his behavior as erratic to her family and close friends, and eventually it became too much for her to handle. 
After only being married for a little more than a month, Karen left her home and moved in with one of her children who lived nearby. Karen confided in her family that Cedric had threatened her. Her mother told the New York Daily News that he had threatened to throw Karen out of a window. Now, Cedric had done a complete 180, and Karen clearly no longer felt safe living with him. Despite their separation and Cedric's threats of violence, he continued to post admiration for Karen on Facebook. After she left, Cedric tried to convince Karen to come back home, but Karen didn't want to come back home. She had known Cedric for years, and within weeks after getting married, he was threatening her. Now, it's unknown what Karen knew about Cedric's past before she met him in 2013. But Karen was not the first woman to accuse Cedric of being abusive. Between 1982 and 2013, he had been arrested four times. Now, during his second arrest in 1993, Cedric was charged with two misdemeanor counts of battery. However, the charges were dropped six months later, and the case was dismissed. And then in 2012, Cedric was arrested on suspicion of domestic assault. At the time, he was living with a woman who was described in reports as his live-in girlfriend. Now, police had been called to the residence several times for domestic violence and disturbances. But Cedric's former girlfriend had accused him of repeatedly threatening her on multiple occasions. He was also accused of holding a knife to her throat and trying to suffocate her with a pillow. In 2013, he was also accused of throwing his keys at her and dragging her across the ground, causing injuries. He was arrested and charged with assault and battery and brandishing a firearm and disturbing the peace. However, all of the charges were dismissed in May 2014. Over the next few weeks after Karen had left, Cedric continued to attempt to convince Karen to come back home. According to her family, Karen didn't take Cedric's threats seriously. She thought that they were just a cry for attention. But Cedric's behavior was more than just a cry for attention. And he had more sinister plans for his estranged wife. Two and a half months after they got married, Cedric would carry out the plan in the most horrific way. I have to tell you about an amazing new service that I found called FrameBridge. FrameBridge makes it super easy and affordable to frame your favorite things, from art prints and posters to the travel photos sitting on your phone. And with Father's Day just around the corner, FrameBridge also makes the perfect gift. In fact, select gifts ship next day. Here's how it works. Just go to framebridge.com and upload your photo, or they'll send you packaging to safely mail in your physical pieces. Preview your item online in dozens of frame styles and gallery wall layouts. Choose your favorite or get free recommendations from their talented designers. The experts at FrameBridge will custom frame your item and deliver your finished piece directly to your door, ready to hang. Instead of hundreds that you'd pay at a framing store, their prices start at just $39 and all shipping is free. Plus, my listeners get 15% off their first order at FrameBridge.com when they use my code GIRLGONE. Order online at framebridge.com or stop by a Framebridge store to work with a designer in person if you're in New York, D.C., Atlanta, Philly, Boston, or Chicago. I love Framebridge. I personally have used it multiple times, and I can't wait to gift my husband his Father's Day gift. Get started today. Frame your photos or send someone the perfect gift. Go to framebridge.com and use promo code GIRLGONE to save an additional 15% off your first order. Just go to framebridge.com, use promo code GIRLGONE. That's framebridge.com, promo code GIRLGONE. We have all been there. Seemingly out of nowhere, you get hit by an unexpected expense or bill. When that happens, it can feel like the weight of the world is coming down and it's normal to not know where to turn. Luckily, Upstart is here to help. Upstart-powered personal loans can help you pay down high-interest debt, all online, with simple and easy-to-understand payment terms. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high-interest debt, or funding personal expenses, 
Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Upstart knows that you're more than just your credit score. So rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, employment, and information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score. You can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash girl gone. That's upstart.com slash girl gone to check your rate today. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash girl gone. Ah, the sounds of summer. Can it get any better? Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Discover the unforgettable sensations of the Lexus Performance lineup. Explore the possibilities of a Lexus at the Golden Opportunity sales event. Now through September 6th, click the banner to discover more. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. In January 2017, Karen Smith married Cedric Anderson. The couple had known each other for four years before the wedding, but after only three weeks of marriage, Karen began to see a different side of Cedric. The man she had known to be kind and loving had suddenly turned into a different person. Karen confided in those close to her that Cedric's behavior was odd and that he had threatened to throw her out of a window. And so, After just over a month of being married, Karen moved out of the home that she shared with Cedric and moved in with her adult children. Cedric tried to convince Karen to come back home after she left, but she refused to return. Even though Karen was facing the possibility of having to divorce her husband of less than two months, she continued to do what she did best, which was to teach. She continued to show up for work every day, but she kept her troubled marriage a secret from those she worked with. On Monday, April 10th, 2017, Karen came to work on what began as a normal day at North Park Elementary School. But shortly before 10.30 a.m., a call came into 911. Hi, how can I help you? We have an active shooter. One of our teachers got shot in the the classroom. At what school? At North North Park Elementary. Okay, we'll get you to her. Do you have a description of the shooter? Um, He's a black male. He's our Mrs. Smith's husband. He's a black male? Yes, and he was wearing a beige um, blazer. A beige blazer. Yes. Okay, we'll get units out there. And where's the the victim at? Um, I think she's, she's in her classroom. What classroom is it? Um, B1. Classroom B1? Okay, in B1. Is the guy still on the campus right uh, now? As far as I know, he is. I, I'm scared. I'm in the office. Okay. And there's... okay, did you guys lock down? <laughs> Cedric Anderson, armed with a 357 revolver, walked into North Park Elementary School. He stopped at the front desk and told the staff that he was there to drop something off to his wife. According to school officials, it was not abnormal for a family member to visit, and they had no knowledge of any issues between the couple. Now, once Cedric checked into the front desk, he made his way to the classroom where Karen was teaching her students. According to reports, without saying a word, Cedric pulled out the revolver and began shooting at Karen. He unloaded the weapon on Karen, striking her multiple times. And when the shots rang out, two of Karen's students were standing behind her and an eight-year-old boy and a nine-year-old boy were also struck by the bullets. Investigators say that after unloading the revolver, which holds six shots, Cedric reloaded the gun and fired at least four more shots before turning the gun on himself. Within four minutes of the first 911 call, police arrived at the elementary school. And as you can imagine, they arrived to a chaotic scene. There were approximately 600 students in the building at the time. But by the time the police arrived, the shooting was over, and Karen and Cedric were dead. Ten shots in all had been fired from the revolver. 
The children that were shot were rushed to the hospital, but eight-year-old Jonathan Martinez did not survive his injuries and was pronounced dead at a local hospital. The nine-year-old boy miraculously survived and recovered from his physical injuries. In the immediate aftermath of the shooting, no one knew what had happened or why. When people hear about a shooting taking place inside of a school, people automatically assume that, like most school shootings, it was done for the reasons that we are familiar with. No one could imagine that this shooting was actually a case of domestic violence. But what no one will ever understand is why Cedric chose to commit this horrific crime at a school. At the time of the shooting, there were 15 children in the classroom. The children were in grades one through four, and they watched as a man walked into their classroom and murdered their beloved teacher and shot two of their classmates, one of whom was fatally wounded. Witnesses that were in the classroom, including two teacher's aides, believed that Cedric would have killed more people if he had had more bullets. One of the aides said that Cedric actually pointed the gun at her and pulled the trigger, but the gun was out of bullets, and that's when he reloaded. Karen's family and friends were shocked by her murder. Those who knew about the problems in their marriage never imagined that Cedric would kill Karen. They, like Karen, didn't believe that Cedric would actually follow through on his threats. And according to investigators, no one knew of him ever threatening to shoot her. Now, after the murder, investigators learned more about Karen and Cedric's short marriage and found out from family members about all of the issues that had existed. But with Cedric dead, there was no way to get answers to the question, why? Investigators searched the home where Cedric lived with his wife until she moved out. They were hoping to find a suicide note that would give them more insight into why Cedric murdered Karen and why he chose to do it at her school in front of children. Now, they were able to seize multiple items from the home, including electronics, but no suicide note was found. Investigators did find notes written by Cedric, but nothing in the writings explained why he did what he did. In the days following the murder, questions arose about how Cedric was able to enter the building and whether or not Karen knew that he was dangerous enough to kill her. But there was no way to know that Cedric would do what he did. No one ever came forward to say that Cedric had told them about his plans, and the school had no idea that Karen and her husband were estranged. And Karen would have not knowingly put the children that she loved in danger. No one understands why Cedric would murder Karen at school, but perhaps he did it there because he knew that besides her own children, her work as a teacher was the most important thing in her life. For 10 years, Karen had dedicated herself to her work and her students, and maybe he just wanted to punish her in the place that she loved the most, doing what she loved the most. Now, after her murder, one of Karen's sons posted a message on Facebook that said, My mother will be remembered as someone who, above all, loved God, her family, and her students. During this time, please refrain from any negative comments about my mother. She loved her students very much and dedicated her entire life to them. It was her passion to see her students succeed. Pray for my family, and please pray for the family of Jonathan Martinez. Pray for all the children impacted by this tragic event. Pray for the Anderson family. I love you, Mama, more than anything in the world. I will see you again, beautiful. Sadly, in this case, we will never know the true reason why Cedric decided to kill Karen that day. But like most abusers, his lack of control eventually drove him to commit this murder. Karen's story reminds me so much of Jacqueline Smith. Besides the last names, the two women were murdered less than a year apart by husbands that they had only been married to for short periods of time. Both women had raised their children and built successful lives for themselves. And they were both around the same age. 
and they were both remarried to men who would eventually kill them. Domestic violence comes in so many forms. Sometimes it lasts for years, and sometimes, like in Karen's case, it escalates quickly, and people who know the victims don't even know that they're in danger. When Cedric walked into North Park Elementary School and murdered Karen and her student, he changed their lives and the lives of everyone in that building that day. Everyone who heard those shots and everyone who heard those screams. Karen did not deserve what happened to her. She was a beautiful person who lived a beautiful life that was brutally cut short by a man who she believed just two months prior she would spend the rest of her life with. Karen's family wants her to be remembered for being a dedicated teacher and a mother. They don't want her to just be the teacher whose husband murdered her at an elementary school because she was so much more than that. May Karen Elaine Smith rest in peace. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Make sure you subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. It also helps our show grow. As always, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook. You could save big when you bundle your home and auto with Progressive, but when we just come out and say it, it feels like it falls a bit flat. So we're going to use humor. But we don't want to insult your intelligence, so nothing too goofy. And we need to avoid any polarizing topics. Oh, and it has to be about how you can save big when you bundle your home and auto with Progressive. You know what? Maybe humor is a bad idea. Yeah, it's never going to work. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discount not available in all states or situations.